Hey everyone, Mark Hayward here from the Absolute Business Mindset podcast and YouTube channel. Today we have an interview with Brian Winch, who is the owner of Clean Lots. So we talk to uh, to uh, Brian about his upbringing and how he got to the entrepreneurial uh, vision and way of being able to conduct his business. So we go into his upbringing, his development, and how he left his corporate job, his, his business job, in 1981 to start Clean Lots. And he talks about having the simple business mindset and simple business to be able to be successful for such a long period of time. So we talk about his cleaning business and we talk about the benefits of being able to be outdoors all the time, experiencing life and enjoying life. So 41 years he's been doing this business and that is massively impressive. And you will hear all about it on this podcast. So if you're enjoying the content, please do give it a like. Please do click the subscribe button. Please also click the bell icon and you'll get all the new videos. And by all means, add comments below if there's anything you're enjoying about these episodes. If there's anything you want to see, anything you want me to interview, then please leave that all in the comments. Now, enjoy the podcast. Enjoy the, the conversation with Brian Winch. Today we have Brian Winch, who is the author and owner of Clean Lots. Hello, Brian. How are you? Great. How are you doing, Mark? Yeah, really good. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, so, I ask the same question to all of my guests. The podcast is called Absolute Business Mindset. But what does a business mindset mean to you? Uh, it means that you have a, a positive attitude um, and you're self-motivated to do the things necessary to operate your business. Um, you're going to run into uh, problems and you have to have that mindset where when you do run into obstacles, you're going to find solutions to, to problems. We'll, co we'll come on to more detail about your business and, and how you got there. But what name one, this is off, off script, but name one thing that you struggled with that you've been able to positively move forward with. Oh, I guess that would be tech. Uh, I started my business in 1981, well before the internet um, and uh, cell phones. If anyone living back then, they were pretty huge. <laughs> And, uh, you know, very few people had them. Uh, they were pretty expensive. The batteries were about the size of a briefcase to, to yeah. charge those cell phones. Yeah. So, um, you know, I started my business, you know, back in the day, you know, but like, like I said, before the internet and a lot of computers. And so gradually, um, you know, as technology creeped into the business, um, I had to learn and it didn't come natural to me. But again, you know, you have to, if you're in business, you have to have that mindset that, you know, you've got to learn skills that, um, you know, so that you're able to market your business and you have to be where your prospects are and your customers are. Yeah. And that sort of adaptability is so important to have a, a long, long business, a business for a long time. So I agree with you a hundred percent. So let's just talk about your upbringing, your education. So what, what, what was your upbringing like? Were you in Calgary when you grew up? Yeah. Um, I'm a native Calgarian, which makes me pretty rare. <laughs> Uh, most people that uh, tend that live in the city tend to uh, come from uh, other places in the country or or around the world. Um, so um, you know, I, I grew up in a, a family, two brothers. Uh, both of my parents were blue collar, you know, hardworking working class people. Uh, we didn't have a lot of money, but my parents never complained. They did what they had to do to support their their two or their three sons and and the family. Um, so my mom oftentimes would you know do things to bring in extra money. Um, she would babysit. Uh, I remember the family house. We had two of them at the time, not at the same time, but different times. We always made sure that there was a basement suite where we could rent it out to people and you know and and uh, generate extra income that way and my father was a, a janitor or a caretaker for the public school system and he would oftentimes do things uh, outside of work such as you know cutting grass in the summer shoveling snow in the winter and even cleaning up litter from parking lots and you know that side gig of his was uh, the inspiration for my eventual business Absolutely. And we'll come on to clean, uh, clean lots in a minute. Um, but what, so was, was your family entrepreneurial? Um, well, you know what, I, I learned how to become entrepreneurial from their examples. Um, you know, they were always kind of, you know, 
doing something on the side to, to generate that extra income, which the family needed, because neither one of them uh, were that educated. They, my, my mom didn't work. She stayed home and, and uh, took, uh, took care of us uh, when we were growing up as kids. And so my, it kind of left it upon my dad, um, you know, to do what he had to do to, uh, you know, bring, bring, the, bring in money. And so, like, you know, I, like I said, I saw the examples of the various ways that they generated income. And, and, and you know, at an early age, I guess it was about five or six, must have rubbed off on me because I, I recall uh, setting up a card table in front of the family house. And I grabbed some of my, uh, the toys from my younger brothers who are a year younger than me. And I started to sell them to the neighborhood kids instead of a lemonade stand. <laughs> and uh, my my uh, mom quickly came out and put a stop to that. And, and uh, but my brothers they weren't too happy with me, and I, I don't think I shared the profits with them. <laughs> Something you've said, and and so I come from a from a working class background as well. My my, my neither of my parents were particularly educated, but I was shared with a lot of love and and support that they both gave me. But <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, but I was taught to work hard and it you you need to graft um but what i've learned growing up and now i'm an entrepreneur myself i've worked in corporate for 14 years but now as an entrepreneur that actually sometimes working hard can be counterproductive and actually working smart is actually a much better more efficient effective way of being able to run a business what's your thoughts on that no, that's a great point. Um, because I learned in business, there's, um, uh, there's a term, you know, just being busy or busy work, you know, uh, yeah. and you know, there's such a thing as smart work. So, you know, you don't want to be doing a lot of things that are not productive or counterproductive to your business. So you, you learn, you know, uh, from doing, I guess, uh, what those, what the good things are and what the bad things are that you, you should draw it's funny that whole point of busy is an interesting concept because when I was working in the corporate there were people that just were like busy busy bees all the way going around having a meeting here a meeting there and had to go and do this I have to go and do that and they, they used to be a great frustration for me because it was like like you need to be productive you need to be efficient you need to work smart as, as best you can and now when I talk to friends of mine who are entrepreneurs and business owners and, and it's less that sort of busy bee, but it's like, are you a good busy or a bad busy? This whole concept of being busy and keeping yourself active and whatever, I think it's changed for me. And now it's like, because if you're doing the things that you love doing and, and we'll get onto your, your business very soon, if you if you do your if you do what you what you love doing and you can make some money out of it, then that's the perfect that whole point of being busy. You don't need to try and enforce yourself to being busy because it, the most important thing is doing what you love and 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 getting value or providing value to to your clients. Exactly, and you well, know, that was one of the reasons why I chose to leave my job, uh, my full-time job um, back in 1981, that's the last time I worked for, for anybody. Uh, is that's because, a long time. Uh, yeah, I've been in business for over 41 years, but I remember when I was working, um, I had to learn how to look busy. Um, you know, I would complete my work and then, uh, you know, I, I learned how to pace myself because if I completed my tasks and then, um, you know, I it looked like I wasn't doing anything, uh, so my boss would come by and say, well, you know what, why aren't you busy? What, 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 why aren't you doing your job? And I said, well, I'm finished my job. I mean, what am I supposed to do? And then, you know, um, my, uh, my coworkers would tell me, Brian, you have to learn how to look busy. <laughs> <laughs> so what was and, the original yeah. job? What was, what was the, the job that you did first of all, before the, before clean lots? Oh, okay. Well, you know, as a, as a teenager, I uh, worked in sales, um, you know, uh, selling sporting goods. And, uh, and then when I, uh, uh, started working full-time for the same company. Um, it was as a shipper receiver in the shipping department. Okay. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I kind of enjoyed it, but um, after a while, I just decided it wasn't for me. And, and uh, I you know, needed to find something that I enjoy doing myself and working for myself. So you started it as a side hustle, Clean Lots, in 1981. Yes. So 
you 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 you're 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 famous for famous you're you're famous for having the simplest business which i think is amazing because um simple is absolutely the way forward on on most things um so so what 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 started you thinking that this was actually a a, a business or a side hustle initially and then building it into a business well you know i remember you know my dad it did things on the side and and uh, one of which i mentioned earlier was cleaning up litter from a um, nearby shopping plaza and he had taken me along with him a couple times when i was you know 12 you know 14 15 years of age uh, just to help him out and uh, you know we had the opportunity to you know first thing in the morning to you know spend some time together and talk and but the, the work actually was really easy we just walked around the parking lot the you know the sidewalks the surrounding landscape and we would sweep up any litter material that we uh, came across into our litter collection tools and it was almost as easy to do as going for a walk and so you know when i was looking at business opportunities um you know, I didn't have much of an education, um, you know, not a lot of money in the bank or, or skills at the time. And so I, I thought, well, you know what, why not see if there is a market for this business full time? And unfortunately, back in 1981, my dad passed away at the end of July, July 28th. And I started my business uh, the, the first week of September. So I, I didn't have his experience, his context to, to call upon. Um, so I, I basically started from scratch other than, you know, the idea, you know, um, you know, th maybe there's money behind this. And so, um, like I mentioned, um, there was no internet back then. So, you know, what did you do to find prospects at the time? You just went through the big, fat, yellow, yellow pages telephone directory. And I let my fingers... The old school, old school Google, isn't it? Yeah, Google, and, and yeah. as the, the saying back then was, let your fingers do the walking. And so I started going through um, who my prospects are, or were, uh, still are, um, property management companies, real estate management companies, real estate yeah. developers. And um, I developed an elevator pitch, you know, this is who I am, and this is how my service can benefit you. And I started calling, cold calling um, these property management companies. Wow. And, wow. and um, you know, about five, six calls in, um, uh, the, the person I was talking to said, well, this was a very opportune time for you to be calling us because we were actually having the discussion in the office this morning that we weren't happy with the service provider we currently have. Would you be interested in taking a look at a couple of our properties and getting back to us with prices? And that's how it all started. Those were my first two buildings. And that's when I started learning, you know, what I needed to do uh, for tools, uh, how, you know, the best way to service a property, be most efficient in my cleaning methods, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And, and marketing myself to, to other prospects how did you do how did you initially work out the pricing for this business well it's, it's based on labor uh, it's not on square footage it's based on the time it would take you to clean any any given property and and no two properties are the same basically i mean you can have uh two identical properties but that doesn't mean uh they'll both fetch the same price because you've got uh, factors to consider uh, such as what uh, type of tenants or businesses are located in the property. Do they generate more litter material than let's say other types of businesses would? Um, it, you know, how, how much traffic is in, in the neighborhood? Is there some schools in the neighborhood where kids naturally would congregate before and after school and perhaps at lunchtime and buy pizza by the slice and, and oftentimes just leave their you know trash or litter in the parking lot. So so you have to factor in those things and it's it comes from experience uh but basically i i charge my customers a set price per month you know uh, for regular service uh, it you know depending on the size of the properties uh and the types of properties it could be for three day a week service it could be five day a week service or even even seven day a week service and then i send them a contract proposal with a set price you know for example 750 dollars a month or or 2500 dollars a month and uh, and then service their property year round. Fascinating. It really is fascinating. And 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 do you like obviously most entrepreneurs have the lifeblood of entrepreneurship is sales. And it sounded to me that the first you 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 found the yellow pages, like the old Google, and you went and made calls and met people. How did you, how have you developed your sort of sales strategy from those initial days up to where now I'm assuming you're quite a well-oiled machine to be able to close sales? Uh, well, you know, I, I learned 
that you need to focus on the benefits. Um, you know, I, I don't look at, at it that I'm selling anything to anybody. Uh, you know, I don't believe in hard sales. Basically, um, I introduce myself to, to people or, you know, maybe prospects and, uh, and I, I tell them how my service can be a benefit to them. In other words, I can give them a cleaner, litter-free property for less money. And, uh, you know, my prospects always want to know a better way and ways to save money. And then I share details um, as to how I do that. It could be uh, uh, via email or in conversations. Um, and, and, and right now is the best time. There's never been a better time to start a business because you have all sorts of platforms, mediums where you can share that message with your prospects. Um, you know, for example, Google My Business. Um, you know, a lot of people um, uh, have a website, but they ne neglect to um, get um, a profile on, you know, or get listed with the various search engines. And, you know, it, it actually operates similar to a mini website where, you know, you can post content, images, videos, but more importantly, because you're, you're listed with the search engines, you're going to show up in search whenever a prospect is looking for your service or product. Um, and so you, you don't have to be ad adept at every single uh, platform out there, social media. Uh, for example, like I'm a business B2B, a business to business. So uh, it doesn't make much sense for me to be on Facebook. Uh, my prospects are going to be on LinkedIn. So that's where I want to be. And, um, you know, you, you get uh, uh, on LinkedIn and then, you, you know, you, you can reach out to um, uh, property managers and ask them, you know, if you could follow them, if you can connect with them and, and even create a business page on, on LinkedIn. And that's where you, you know, can also share some posts where your prospects are going to, to see those uh, posts rather than just, the, you know, the general public at large. And so what area do you cover now? Uh, well, I'm all in the Calgary area and a radius outside of the city in some surrounding communities. So, um, you know, we're we're all over the place, all over the city. You know, when I started out, uh, I tried to keep my uh, cleaning route, you know, fairly compact. But then, as I added more people to work for us, uh, you know, we've got an army that you know blankets the city, and then also, um, you know, a couple of cities outside of uh, the city of Calgary as well, and. Um, it, um, you know, there, we've got quite a few people, so it, there's never much travel time between one property to the next for our, for our crew. And how many employees do you have now? Um, there's about uh, 8 to 11. Uh, any given time, we've got uh, part-time people, uh, people that work for us full-time, and then, you know, we, of course, uh, you know, do, do a lot of the properties ourselves, like myself. I mean, I, I've scaled back in the number of hours that I put in every day, but I really enjoy the satisfaction from seeing the results of my work and, um, you know, and, and knowing that I'm, I'm you know, making my community uh, a cleaner environment. And so uh, it, it's great exercise. It's almost like as easy as going for a walk. So I don't really see myself not ever doing it. Uh, you know, as long as I'm healthy, I may sk further scale back my, my hours. But I, the way I see it, I get great exercise every morning and I get compensated for it. So you still pound the streets? You still you still clean? Yep. yep. How many hours a week do you do now, or or month, whatever? Well, I, I typically put in about well, uh, three or four hours um, uh, a day into providing the service, and then I uh, operate the office as well. Right. And you've got a book out, haven't you? Yes, I share my experience and offer free support through it as well uh, in my book, Clean Lots: America's Simplest Business. And um, what, what's the story behind the book? Well, you know, about well, four years into the business, I, it dawned on me, well, you know, I kind of stumbled upon a, a, a very simple business that, you know, I mean, if I could start it and be successful, uh, you know, why can't other people? So um, I decided to, to, to share my experience in the form of a book. And, uh, you know, as the years went by, um, you, know, you know, some people, I, you know, they would tell me, Brian, you're nuts, you're you're giving away this information for almost nothing. You should franchise it. But then, you know, uh, the memory of my, my dad and his humble beginnings, uh, I thought, well, I, I want to make this affordable to people such as ourselves, where, you know, we, you know we, we've got, you know, maybe some limitations. We don't have deep pockets, if you will. And really, there's no benefit to anyone paying me franchise fees, royalty fees, because it is such a simple business. You learn it. 
And, um, you know, I, I, I provide my um, experience in the form of a book. It's more like an operations manual, similar to what you would get if you bought, purchased a franchise. And it also comes with the free support, um, which I provide. My contact information is in the book. Anytime someone wants, um, needs some help or has a question, they can reach out to me. And I, you know, th that's the most affordable way. And I, 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 I get a kick uh, out of uh, hearing and, and seeing uh, success stories, you know, from people that have uh, bought my book in, you know, in years gone by. Do you think, is your book very focused on the, the business type, the, 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 the cleaning litter, or is it more generic about how to run a business? Well, I'm sure you can, uh, it's both. I mean, if you, um, you know, wanted to learn how to, you know, start another service, uh, uh, for example, there's a lot of tips that, and tricks you could take uh, out of my book and apply them to that. Um, and the same goes for the support I, I provide. Um, you know, obviously, I'm, I'm more experienced in selling a service than, than a product, but you're really, you know, uh, from running a business for as long as I have, you, you, you kind of learn, well, you know, this platform would work better, perhaps if you were marketing a product uh, than a service uh, and, and vice versa. So, um, uh, you know, I've, I've, some people have reached out to me and asked me if I can, you know, provide some consultation, you know, to them, uh, they, they uh, have a business idea and they're, and they're looking for, you know, uh, ways to, to launch it. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy sharing my experience. How do you um, how do you not be diverted to the shiny penny syndrome that like you've been doing the same business for forty one years? Uh, how have you remained so focused on that business model and not been attracted by spin off businesses or or potential other opportunities? I, you know, I I have a passion for it, and um, you know that's a great question because a lot of people when they uh, you know look for business opportunities and they think they want to work for themselves, they they fall into that. Uh, they they start chasing the dollars and the money and, and you know the shiny syndrome, where uh, you know and they look down at a lot of other opportunities that are potentially are extremely lucrative. And uh, I, I tell people, don't follow the bucks, uh, because chances are, if you do that, if that's your prime motivation, uh, as soon as you run in, into some problems or difficulties, you're more apt to give up on it. Uh, but if you find something that perhaps maybe you can monetize, you know, like a hobby that you can monetize, or, you know, you've, you feel that you've got a calling, you know, you want to make a difference in your community, wh whatever the motivation is, if, if there's a, you have a passion for what, whatever it is, and everyone's got a certain skill to bring to the table. Uh, you're going to be more, more likely to be successful. And then the more successful you become, uh, like for, I've been around 40 years, so some people consider to me, me to be an expert, the money follows. And that's where the money comes in, is uh, being very good or, or the best at what you do. Have you never thought of um, uh, like uh, selling products like cleaning materials or uh, buckets or things like that that you could have that, that support your business they uh they they complement the business rather than uh than anything have you ever thought of spanning out into that um well then there you know there then there's the logistics um you know um uh, can you find somebody that will drop ship products for you or if not uh are you going to warehouse uh, the mm -hmm. items um mm -hmm. you know then there's, you know, the questions like that, which I'm really not interested in doing, but what I've done in terms of creating uh, complementary products to my book, um, I've done, uh, and they're digital products. So if someone uh, wants additional tools to help market their business after buying the book, um, I have a business marketing video, which is kind of like an explainer video. And I've got a business template, uh, you know, package that um, uh, helps people, you know, create forms, you know, based on my template, and ju they just insert their own contact information. And so I'm, I'm you know, kind of looking down uh, that road in terms of developing future products, as opposed to something that, uh, you know, uh, would be more of a physical product, um, you know, or a tool. Why is simple best? Because it's easy. <laughs> you know, I don't believe in complicating things. Um, you know, I think 
really life is simple. It's people that make it difficult. Uh, I, you know, I, my wife works and she's always telling me that, and she's a project manager and she's just dumbfounded that sometimes people will go out of their way to create something that just makes the whole process that much more difficult. And, and you know, and it's not really making anything more simple. And so, you know, and people have that temptation to often do that. And so with, with my business opportunity, my business, and part of the reason I've been in it for, for 40 years, I enjoy the simplicity behind it. Fascinating. Thank you very much. So what's the plan for the next two to five years? Well, you know, I want to continue sharing this opportunity with as many people um, that are interested in uh, making a difference in their community by providing for a cleaner environment. Uh, and assisting them from the uh, the support that I provide, and um, you know we'll, we'll see how my health holds out. I'm, I'm 62 now. Uh, it's great exercise. I you know I, I hope to continue doing this for for the next several years, and uh, we'll see where it goes. Interesting. Okay, thank you. Um, we're coming to the end of the interview. I ask the same six questions to all of my guests. They're quick fire questions. They do not need a quick fire answer. Um, first one is, what's the best decision that you made? working for myself. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't have a lot of stuff to start with, but I found ways to make it work. Uh, so I encourage people, you know, go for it. How did you, um, so you bootstrapped, you, you obviously those, those, how, how did you, that, that first week, that first month, that first year, what, what, was it just establishing the business or uh, was it, like, what, what, what was the yeah. first sort of year like? Well, pretty much, um, you know, after I started it in September, it was about three or four months later that um, actually I was making more money doing this on the side than I was from my full time job. So that's when I took the first step and I, I quit my job. And, uh, and then I was working for myself for the first time, you know, full time. And, uh, and because I had extra time on my hands, then I was able to uh, market my business more. So that I, you know, I could, uh, you know, scale the, the, the side gig into a full-time business and, and, you know, and then, you know, learning from doing. Absolutely. What's the best piece of advice you've been given? Well, that I've been given? Yeah. Um, you know, the, uh, my grandfather told me, uh, and he was a school teacher among many other things uh, in his long life. He always told me, Brian, there's no such word as can't. And I, I didn't really understand what he meant by that, but I guess he was trying to tell me that, you know, don't make excuses for, you know, and oftentimes people, you know, uh, they, they think they have their best interests, uh, you know, for you, but uh, you know, sometimes family or friends will, will tell you, you, you can't do that, Mark. Uh, there's no point even trying, you know, uh, and, you know, sometimes maybe they're jealous I and mean, they'd like to do it, but they they can't for whatever reason feel you know they feel stuck in their life so they don't want to encourage you to to pursue your dreams so so yeah uh, there's no such word as can't excellent who's helped you most in your career oh um you know i, I probably uh, you know even though my dad wasn't around to see me start the business uh, just his example um, you know, I, I still, you know, look back on, on his life and, and, uh, he was a great teacher for me growing up and as was my mom. Uh, do you have any regrets? No, no. Um, you know, I, you know, I made some mistakes along the way, but you learn from mistakes and, uh, they're, they're lessons. So, um, you know, I, I can't really say I have any regrets. Fantastic. What are you most proud of? I'm most proud of how I turned this, you know, my dad's side gig into a, a very successful business of 40 plus years. And I'm sure if, you know, if he's looking down at me, he'd be really proud of what I, what I've done. What does legacy mean to you? Um, the memory, uh, you know, uh, how people remember you. Um, so, you know, I, I've touched a, a lot of lives and, um, you know, hopefully, you know, when I'm gone, people will have fond memories of how I helped them. Um, and where can people find you if they want to reach out to you? Um, my website, uh, cleanlots.com. Um, you know, on my homepage, there is a, a free download a report. If you're considering the opportunity, you're not sure about it, you, you can uh, 
just uh, get the free download uh, PDF uh, report. And then also there's a three minute video uh, on my website as well that, uh, that shows me doing the work, uh, you know, walking the property and using the tools that I use to clean up and uh, gives uh, people a really good understanding of what my, my business and service is all about. And my book is also available on, on Amazon. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Brian. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. It's been fascinating speaking to you about your 40 year old business. Thanks, Mark. It's been a pleasure.